Yeah. It's these guys that irritate me. They're irritating. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Revelation. We're dealing with the seventh of the churches, Laodicea today. And so let's uh, begin with prayer. God of grace, we bless you this day and give you all the glory. We ask that you, through your word, help us to look at the church in Laodicea to see whether or not it kind of points to us as well. Help us to heed your word and turn back towards you, strengthening our church and our individual faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Laodicea. Uh, Laodicea is the lukewarm church. Um, where is it located? Okay. It's at the very southern part of the seven churches. Uh, but remember, these aren't the only churches. There are about 35 altogether, right, in this one area there. And so these are picked out for a special reason. Uh, several cities hosted the name Laodicea in Syria and Asia Minor. Of all, only one near Phrygia and Lydia, about 90 miles east of Ephesus, is named in the Bible. It was named uh, Laodicea in honor of Laodice, the wife of uh, Antiochus the uh, second, who ruled up until about uh, 46 BC, uh, 246 BC. Uh, and then it was uh, rebuilt again. And the town was located on a flat topped hill. A wall uh, was around the city, uh, surrounded the crown of the hill. Uh, gates uh, pierced this wall on the north, the east, and the northwest. At the southwest edge of the plateau uh, stood the stadium, uh, built, it was about a mile long and probably uh, dating to the second century AD. Uh, adjacent to the stadium on the north was a structure probably uh, to be identified as baths and built during the height of uh, Hay uh, Hadrian, who was the emperor from seven, uh, 117 to 138. He's also the guy that built the wall in, uh, in Great Britain, Hadrian's Wall, uh, to divide the north from the south. Uh, it was uh, built to keep the Picts from coming into Roman territory. And it marked the end of Rome, not the end of the Roman Empire, but the end of the Roman territory. Uh, now, remains of two rather badly ruined theaters uh, may be seen on the site. And so it's not, uh, it's really not in existence anymore. Um, it's just a, a ruin. And so the, the city and the church we, we just don't know what happened to them. Okay. Um, would somebody please read? And uh, Steve, you've got the microphone in your hand. Okay, we've been at, talked, we've been called by some people, and we've been asked about our sound. Um, we've got a problem with the mic last week. It doesn't integrate with our system. And so, so we are going to get another mic. The, the mics are like 300 and... Fifty to four hundred fifty dollars, uh, and so um, we did find one that same mic from another company that uh, is about a hundred dollars less, and so we're going to uh, try to get a better mic. The little system I had last week just doesn't integrate. It just makes when you transmit, it makes a lot of static, uh, and so please bear with us. We'll try to get this portable mic around to other people. Okay, Steve, would you please read uh, to the end of the chapter? I believe that's verse, what, 21? 22 in there somewhere. Oh, and to the angels of the church of the Lacedaemon. 
to uh, Laodicea. Laodicea, right. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of the God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes, white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and sob out your put, sob out to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be honest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with you and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I overcome and sit down with my father on his throne, he who has an ear can hear me and let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, so here again we have uh, the address to the angel at the church of Laodicea, uh, to the pastor of that church, and they... John is to write what he sees and hears, and um, to give testimony to this. Now, the reason that there is a lot of picture language here is that um, the Lord didn't want unbelievers to be able to understand the book of Revelation at all. The book is not written to unbelievers. It is written only to the believer because without the aid of the Holy Spirit, there's no way you can understand this book, okay? Uh, Christians will say, well, I just, I don't read that. I just don't understand Revelation. That's because they're not applying the gifts of the Spirit to the letter that Jesus is giving to the church through John. And especially younger people nowadays, we're not trained in our schools anymore uh, to be deductive in our reading. Um, I don't even know if they do book reports anymore. Are they With your kids, your grandkids, do they assign uh, books for them to read anymore? And, um, yeah, no one knows anymore the way things go on. Um, yeah, and everything's on computer. Well, that's okay. I read all my books on my library right now is about 450 books, and they're all, matter of fact, they're all sitting right in there uh, because they're all in my what? They're in my, uh, yeah, in my fire. Okay, my cuter's here. But my um, Kindle is in there, and so everything is there. Uh, I walk around with my library. Um, and, and so, but when we were young, <laughs> um, some years back, the uh, schools required you to read something, and then they would have you uh, break, break it down. You'd have to, what? write the sentence out and break that sentence down. Um, you had to know what verbs were, what adjectives were, uh, pronouns. I was thinking about what my pronoun could be, and I decided uh, there's so many to forget about it. So, um, yeah, my pronouns. Um, and, and so... We have a responsibility to the Lord as pastors to present the message to the church. That's why he's writing to 
to the pastor. Now, how is Christ described here? What happened? Okay, he is the amen. Uh, what does amen mean? Amen, so be it, or uh, yay, yay, this is so, it, 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 okay? This is the truth. Um, you can rely on this. And so the amen is an important title for Christ. It expresses his, um, his very nature. He is the last word in all things. And his word is, according to this, what? What does it say there? Faithful and true. Okay, it's faithful. You can count on it. Uh, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. Um, words, for some reason, change very quickly nowadays. Um, I, I used a terminology some years ago, and when I was growing up, um, it meant a silly mistake. And in the confirmation class, my kids looked at me, and one of my daughters was in her class, and she said, Dad, do you know what that word means? I said, yeah, it means to make a silly mistake. She goes, no, I don't. And later she explained what the word meant. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the word was. <laughs> yeah, you would know. Okay, but I'm not doing it on the air. Uh, you come, you come and ask me later, but you have your husband with you. Um, I'm not going to explain that to you without your husband there. Um, okay, so but but words change. When we grew up, gay meant to be happy and joyous. Uh, the, 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 the song, now we don our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Okay, you, you sing that today and people think you're what? You're part of the alphabet group. Because the word has changed. Um, So a lot of words change, and so because of that, the understanding of what we're saying changes as well. I made a statement one day that Christians need to be the ones who are gay. And one of the young people in, the, in there turned to her mother, and they talked to me about it later. She said, did pastor just say that Christians ought to be homosexuals? And her mother said, no, they're to be happy. She did not know what the word gay actually meant. Has nothing to do with the alphabet people. They absconded with the word. Okay, and they've done that with a lot of things nowadays. Um, and, and it's unfortunate. So Christ is the faithful one. Everything his, he says can be relied upon because it's true. The and, faithful and true, the chi there, the word for and, connects those two together. Okay? Uh, it doesn't, it, many times in English, uh, faith and true, faithful and true, two different concepts in English. But in the Greek, to be faithful is to be true. So the chi connects those two together in, in a very intricate, very uh, relational ship way. And so he is faithful, and in that faithfulness, he is the true one. Okay, to be faithful and true is to be what? Sinless. To be true is to be without sin. And none of us are what? Without sin. So none of us are what? Are, are true in what we do and what we say. 
Yeah, probably. Robert says we're lukewarm. Um, and, and so, um, but lukewarm, we're going to find out, is not what? It's, it's not good. Okay. Now, what do you mean? Wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute, Pastor. How, how can you say that uh, we can't be true? I, I was, um, years ago, many, many, many years ago, I was in a training session, and they were showing a film, and um, this guy came running through the um, classroom, and he flipped over a desk, and he went running out, and, uh, please, Robert, yes. And they critiqued it afterwards, and they asked the people to describe the guy. Do you know that not one person there could actually... They described him, but they didn't get it right. So they bring the guy back in, and not one of them had it correct. Now, to swear an oath to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, they would have actually what? Lied. Okay. And, and so... Just because you think you see something doesn't mean that you have seen it. Um, a pastor, I've told this before, thank you, Brian. Uh, a pastor um, went into a bar. He spent about 10 or 15 minutes there and he came out of the bar. One of his alligators, an alligator is someone always biting at the pastor. Uh, one of his alligators spread it around that the pastor was in the bar drinking. The pastor was in the bar at the request of a parishioner's wife if he could please go and get him to leave the bar and come home. And that's what the pastor was doing there. But this woman just tried to destroy the pastor because the pastor was drinking in the bar. She didn't know what was going on but she spread it all around the congregation, okay? And people thought it was true because she saw it. But she wasn't in the bar. She didn't see what was going on in the bar, okay? Don't assume what you see is what you actually see. It could be totally different, okay? It could be totally different. Um, we had just been to a class on uh, sexuality in the ministry. And um, a young lady came to the house, and Dot was at work. And um, I talked to her through the screen. And uh, one of the elders, another one of those, um, at the elders meeting wanted to know why I made that poor woman stand on my stoop and didn't invite her in my house. Well, first of all, my wife's not there. Second of all, my kids weren't there. So it would only been who? Me and her. So I could almost swear to you that if I were to let her in my house, he would have said, do you know that the pastor let a woman in his house uh, when his wife wasn't there? You know, you have to be told really careful. Um, so don't always believe what you hear. Check it out. Back it up, make sure it's correct. The same thing like I tell you here. Make sure you check out what I tell you with the Word of God. Back it up. And if I'm wrong, tell me about it. So, only Christ is faithful and only Christ is true. Um, well, wait a minute. Why do you mean I'm not faithful? Do you commit a sin? Do you have a sin? Uh-huh. Do you know that a sin is being unfaithful to the Lord? So every time we sin, we're being unfaithful. Only Christ is faithful. Okay, so uh, what does Christ testify against the uh, Laodiceans? Yeah, he, 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 he says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. 
Either be cold or be hot, but don't be lukewarm. Um, basically, what, what lukewarm means here is don't be compromising. You either stand for the truth of the Word of God or you don't. Make up your mind what you're going to be. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to get into that. Uh, Sharon asked if the deeds were the proclamation of the gospel, and we're going to look at that in a little while, in a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, and um, but I would say yeah, pretty much so. Okay. And, and so uh, he wants us to be faithful and true. We need to examine our lives to know that we're not, and we need to. F- Examine our works, uh, our out, and what we're doing in our our life, our family's life, the life of our church. Are we living up to the gospel? Are we proclaiming the gospel? Are we an inviting church? Are we uh, a standoffish church? Um, Do we open our doors to the community, regardless of who they are? Um, And we have to ask ourselves all of these kind of questions. Um, When we're dealing with the Bible, we have to look at the Bible and uh, apply the W's. And I know you learned the W's in school. They don't teach them anymore. Who, what, when, where, and why. Okay? Do you ask that question? Who's talking? When did this take place? Why is it happening? Why is it happening? Why is it saying this? This church was very compromising, very uh, accepting of praise. Uh, very much uh, arrogant, uh, very much uh, haughty, elite, okay? As we, we go on, we'll find this out. And because of this, what was Christ ready to do? Spit them out. Spew, I'm going to spew you out. I'm going to vomit you or spew you, uh, spit you out, okay? Um, and from, from the looks of it, what did God do? It spit them out, yeah. Okay, so what do they say? Yeah, they say, I am rich. But in reality, they're what? Poor, okay? Um, They were a very wealthy congregation. Very wealthy. Um... They could buy anything they wanted. They could do whatever they wanted. They weren't paupers. So you say that I am rich. They had acquired wealth. They say they what? Need nothing. They, they, they need nothing at all from God. A uh, poll was done Who's that big pollster company? Uh, Gallup. Gallup did a poll years ago in Canada. And um, what they found was that, it's getting hot in here. Uh, They found that the more wealth a person had attained, the less reliant on God they were. Uh, Because, well, I don't need... God's help, I can do it myself. I've got all the money I need to accomplish that. Why would I need God? Um, And and that's the problem with this congregation. What do I need God for? I've got everything. I need for nothing. If I want it, I can go do it. That's arrogance. Arrogance. That's forgetting where 
what you have has come from and why you have it. Um, to whom much is given, much will be required. Welch's is probably one of the best examples of that. Um, Welch developed a way to keep grape juice from spoiling or turning into what? Wine, okay, fermenting. And Welch made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. But Welch was a very um, committed Methodist. And he looked at his wealth and he decided that he was not going to tithe. He decided that he'd give 90% to the church and he'd live on the other 10. <laughs> he turned it around, okay? And he did that. Uh, he blessed the church. Um, did, 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 did the Senate ever have anything like that? Did our Senate ever have something like that? Yeah, we did. Like that, uh, Schwan, Schwan, Schwan. Okay, you know Schwan, don't you? The little yellowish truck that runs around and delivers. That belonged at one time to a very committed Missouri Senate Lutheran family. And as long as Dad was alive, Schwan backed the church quite well. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, then they, they're not belonged by that family anymore, and the church doesn't get blessed like that anymore. But they, were, they went overboard, too, for the church. There are a lot of people like that. Um, yeah. There was one time Bush was, you know, before they sold out um, years ago, and, you know, uh, Anheuser-Busch doesn't even belong to the Bushes anymore belongs to a company in um, Germany or Austria. I thought it was Austria, but same, same area. Um, and, and so being committed to serving the Lord with what the Lord provides us is the important thing. Okay, Why has God provided me with this extra? Okay, God blesses me, Scripture says, in order for me to be a what? A blessing to others. And if I am blessed with money, I need to use that money wisely. Okay? Uh, we were blessed over Christmas with some very special gifts. And um, we took the gifts and we tithed them to two ministries. And, and that's what... The, you do with the gifts you get. You utilize them to bless others. Okay? That they didn't do. That they didn't do. Um, it's almost as if they love their money too much. The love of money is what, though? Yeah, it's the root of all evil. Okay? Because when you allow your wealth to rule your life, It's normally at the expense of what you should be doing with your life, okay? So they said they were rich, but actually they were poor. Poor where? In their spirit, okay? They were poor in the use of the gospel. And that's, that's one of those special things. Um, now... Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we'll just leave it there. Um, got the wrong one up. Oh, uh, the one I fixed up is not there. Okay, and now, according to Christ, what are they in that, in that next verse, in that verse? The very first thing they are is what? Wretched. They are worthless, despicable. Okay? What then what? Pitiful. They're pathetic. 
Then they're what? Poor, void of any value. Then blind, unable to see the grace set before them. And then finally, they're what? Naked. They're devoid of any righteousness. Okay, so if they're worthless, they have no value to who? A little more specific. God. They have no value to God at all if they're worthless. Um, what is our value to God? We do have a value, okay? Uh, faith is in there, yes. Our testimony, okay? Our faith produces what? Good works. The first work that we should be concerned with is our testimony, not to ourself, but to Christ, about Christ. Uh, I was at a, uh, a, a, a presentation, and I was listening to the guy, and um, he's reading from a book that kept saying, uh, received Christ, received Christ, and he kept saying, when I accepted Christ. Uh, there's a difference between accepting and receiving. Accepting is, I'm doing it. Receiving is passive. One is active, the other is passive. Okay? And um, I did this, I did this, I did this. Okay? God blessed me. God blessed me. Okay? Yeah, God blessed him. I, and I praise God for the blessings that, that he received because one of them was his life. Um, one of them was his very life. And um, he, he was going to go out, and um, he got, couldn't find anybody to take his um, KP. I'll use that, KP. And so he didn't go out. He had to be up real early, and um, his friends went out. And um, three of them were killed in a car accident. One of them lost his leg, and the other one was crippled for life. In other words, if he wouldn't have found, if he would have found somebody to take his KP, he'd have been where? Been with him. Um, yeah, my daughter uh, was going to a retreat, and she was driving. She had a Geo Metro. How big is a Geo Metro? Little, little bitty thing. Okay, the, the guy that was going with him had an Acura. Big difference. She put her key in the door and she turned it and broke her key off in the door. She only had that key. In other words, she couldn't do what with that Metro. Couldn't drive it. So they took his car instead. A drunk plowed into them and totally destroyed the car. They figured he was going close to 100 miles an hour when they killed him. If they would have been in that Geo Metro, every one of them would have been dead. Um, the driver told the other girl, please sit in the middle. Don't sit behind the seats. My daughter's seat broke and went straight back into the back window almost into the window in the back. If she'd have been sitting behind there, the headrest would have done what? Would have decapitated her. Uh, you know, and so, you know, God does work some miraculous things. Uh, but if these people had never heard the gospel, what would their outcome have been in these situations? They'd have been lost. So to have worth to God is to be a good witness, not to what I've done, but what Jesus has done for me. Okay. Um, pitiful. In other words, absolutely pathetic. Uh, if 
Okay, a person is pathetic when they reject what others are doing for them. To reject the gospel of the grace of God in Christ is pathetic. Um, and, and so to hear the message of hope and to reject it is pathetic. These people have heard the gospel, but what aren't they doing? They're not living the gospel. And see, that's one of the problems we have in the church today. We hear it, but are we living it? Um, do we walk with Christ, or do we walk alone? And in many cases, we walk alone. We walk alone. Um, And it's really, it's really weird. Um, when the, 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 a lot of the Greek forms that deal with our relationship with God, with Christ, are side by side. Okay. With means to be side by side and going in the same direction. Are we? And, and in many cases, we're, we're not. And we've got to be careful about how we react to the gospel. Poor, void of any value. If we're not worth something to God, if we are pathetic in our reception of the gospel, we have no value at all to God. What is our purpose? We've talked about this before. The apple's purpose is not to provide us fruit, it's to provide another apple tree. The purpose of a Christian is not to just walk around and say, oh, look at how holy I am. It is to what? Bring others. It is to bring the gospel so that other Christians can be, by the Holy Spirit, created. But Christians act as if that doesn't make a difference. And it really does. How we use the gospel in the life of other people is the value that God has put on our testimony. How many of us Talk about the salvation we have in Jesus Christ to other people. Yeah, almost. I, I, I don't know the numbers, but I would almost, it's probably around 10%, maybe, uh, if that many. Um, out of 100 Christians, how many are talking about the grace of Christ in their life? How many of you watched the Babylonian bee? Have you ever watched the Babylonian bee? Oh, you want to have some wonderful, funny things. Go up. It's a, a program of satire. Go up on YouTube. Type in Babylonian bee. And uh, they've got some great stuff there. They've got one, uh, one deal where um, they moved from California to Texas, back to California, back to Texas, and they're vegans at a Texas barbecue. And she asked if they have a vegan selection. <laughs> and so um, her husband, she lost track of him. And one of the women says, I think he's around there with the guys. She walks around there, and he's got barbecue sauce all over his mouth. He's got a chicken leg in one hand, a rib in the other hand. And she goes absolutely nuts. He goes, no, no, it's not as it looks. Honey, it's not as it looks. I, I sat down and I went to say something and it just fell in my mouth. <laughs> you know? uh, he got arrested last week by the FBI 
because in, on January 6th, he was in and around the Capitol, was told to leave, and he left. But his picture got what? Yeah, face recognition pulled him out, and they went and arrested him. Um, and one, they were, uh, they made a, a skeptical of it. They didn't wait. As he was coming off the tarmac in Bakersfield, they arrested him at the bottom of the steps of the airplane. And um, they were real upset with this guy. One reason they were upset with him is because he's not white. He's black, and he had a mega hat on. They didn't like that. And so, um, yeah. And so what did he do? Um, they arrested him, and they put him in handcuffs. His eight-month pregnant wife is standing there. Luckily, there were people that had come to meet them and could take her home. And so um, he witnessed to the FBI agent. One of the agents, a woman agent, blew him off real fast. The other agent was listening to him. And so he witnessed the whole time when they were taking him to jail <laughs> to the FBI agents. Um, that's value, okay? Um, I don't know. And so they ended up uh, charging him with four misdemeanors. But they held him over so that he went to the court late Friday. That meant he couldn't get released till when? Monday. So he had to spend the whole time in the weekend in jail. They were doing it to be mean. Um, and, and so, but he used that situation as a moment to witness. To witness. And then when he was uh, in jail, they asked him if he wanted anything to read. He said, a Bible. Um, I don't think we've got one. So they went to the library and they found a Bible and they brought him a Bible and he started reading as loud as he could. <laughs> and they finally closed the door <laughs> so that they didn't have to. But no, he uses that. Use that to, that's value. Okay? Uh, but yeah, go up and watch some of those. They are absolutely funny. Oh. No, um, I, don't, I can't pronounce it. Uh, it's um, it's not an American name. Okay? Um, uh, no, this is he. He has a uh, an ethnic name. No. Oh no no no. Uh uh. He his family probably been Christian longer than yours. Um, I don't. I've got. I have a um, Sem brother by the name of Rajan. Lives in India. They can trace their Christian lineage back before Germans were out of the huts with cow dung put around it. Oh, no, you know what I'm talking about. You're a smart butt. Okay, yeah, your family goes back to Adam and Eve. Oh, my God. God, I'm related to <laughs> Dwayne. I'm related to Dwayne. Okay. All right. Next thing. Uh, poor. <laughs> no value. Blind. Unable to see the grace of God that is set before them. Here is my grace. But they couldn't see it. They were blind to it. In other words, they were trying to do what? Earn their own salvation. They were naked. It's, it's after 10 already. Wow. We started late. Uh, it, it, uh, they're naked. They are devoid of any righteousness. In our baptism, we put Christ on. We are covered with his righteousness. Ours is as filthy rags. But his is pure, holy, sinless, acceptable to the Father. And they have none of it. 
the righteousness that they are supposed to have in Christ, they don't. In other words, they're being self-righteous. I don't need God. I'm rich. I don't need anything from God is what they're saying. And they are devoid of the righteousness of Christ. Without the righteousness of Christ, you cannot enter heaven. That means Jews, Muslims, to some extent. I know Muslims that are Christians. Um, Hindi, Sikhs, Buddhists, none of them. Jehovah Witnesses either. They do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. Okay? They reject Christ as being God. Um, go ahead, read what it, what does it say? Yeah. Okay, so the Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is a created creature. He's not God. In the beginning, John 1 1. Hain arche ha theos legas. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's, I only used a little bit of the Greek. Okay? He was in the beginning with God. Okay? Uh, the Jehovah Witness says, no, that's not what it says. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. In other words, Jehovah Witnesses are what? They're pantheists. They believe in many gods. They're just like the Mormons. Okay. Um, Jesus is a God. That means there's more than what? There's more than one God. Okay. Um, and they haven't put Christ on either. They haven't received that grace. They're trying to work their way to heaven. Okay, any questions on what we've gone through? We're going to finish this up, and we'll start chapter 4 next week as well. Dwayne, do you have any questions? No? Okay, great. Sharon? Oh, I feel left out this week. Okay, let's close in prayer. God of glory, we thank you that as we look at what you say this church is, we ask your forgiveness because each one of these items, each one of them, if we look truthfully at our lives, we need to ask your forgiveness for it. We need to repent and turn from these sins. And allow your grace, your gospel to overflow us and fill us and motivate us. Make a blessing, Lord, in our lives through your word. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay. All right.